Now look, I know from the bottom of my heart that this video is gonna create future millionaires because I'm actually gonna be sharing the three habits that made me a millionaire by the age of 18. Now, some of these might surprise you and some of these might even trigger you, but years later and having made it over $17 million in profits later and actually retained over $10 million after taxes, I feel as though now I can look back very candidly and really pick out the three key habits that made me make my first million by the age of 18. So with no further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, the first habit may seem kind of small and irrelevant, but it highlights a much bigger issue as to why you're not where you want to be in life. So the first habit that actually made me a millionaire was turning my phone on airplane mode. Pretty much the first three years of my business was built pretty much entirely while my phone was on airplane mode. And I'll explain why. You see, most people think that the reason they are not a millionaire is because of lack of energy, like they don't have enough energy or motivation to do something, or a lack of knowledge, a lack of knowledge, understanding, and they think these are usually the two main reasons why. That is actually incorrect in 90% of cases. In 90% of cases, the thing that they lack is focus, because if you have focus, then you will do the work and doing the work and getting into that state of flow actually gives you that energy and motivation and when you are someone who can sit down and focus on a task for a prolonged period of time, you will inevitably get the knowledge and information that you need in order to make a million dollars. So this is why putting your phone on airplane mode is so important because ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world where it, you know, there's constant notification, constant distractions. So, you know, most people, the phone isn't enough. Most people have, you know, a Apple watch with notifications going on 24 seven and their computer is binging here and binging there you need to reclaim your focus. You should not let anyone rob you of the most important thing that you have, which is your focus and your attention. So that's why in the first three years of my business, it didn't matter what I was doing. I made sure my phone was on airplane mode and it was in the other room. So that way I had no distractions and I could focus single-handedly on my task. Now I know what some of you guys are thinking. No, I actually need my phone. I need notifications. I need to be able to stay connected in order for my work, my career, uh, you know, a new business that I'm starting, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, that could for sure be true, but undoubtedly some of the best work that you will do, some of the best deep focus work that you will do will be when your phone is on airplane mode. So, you know, same thing with me. When I built my business, I had to actually have my phone on. I had to stay connected. I had to take Zoom meetings, all that stuff. So I had to be connected. But the first few hours of my day, I always had my phone on airplane mode and I made sure that I was the one who chose where my attention and my focus was going. Now, if you're in a position where you truly think, you know, you need your phone uh, on pretty much all the time for your work. Well, then I just challenge you at least while you are sleeping at night, put your phone on airplane mode while you're showering. You don't need your phone on. Try to find these little pockets of time where you challenge yourself to put your phone on airplane mode and make sure that you are the one who is steering your attention and steering your focus. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, we live in such a crazy world where the standard is so low of focus. The standard is so low because so many people are just sucked in by Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, this notification, that notification, et cetera, et cetera. TikTok, I mean, don't even get me started. And for that reason, as I said, the bar is so low of how much focused output someone can do. So that means that even if you're a person who can put their phone on airplane mode and just focus on tasks for 30 minutes, that already puts you in honestly the top 5%, 3% of the population. So habit number one was turning my phone on airplane mode, which was really just to signify a much larger issue that the world is facing which is a lack of focus. The next habit that made me a millionaire by the age of 18 was choosing the right vehicle. It absolutely breaks my heart to see people who work so incredibly hard, are so dedicated, but yet no matter how hard they work, by the age of 30, they will never even see a million dollars. I mean, really, these are people who sacrifice all of their 20s. And the reason that is, is because they have not chosen the right vehicle. Now, the right vehicle is one of two things. It's something where either you're paid very well for your time, or it's something that you can actually use leverage. Now, when I say leverage, I mean, you can outsource to people, you can hire people, you can uh, uh, build a product and it can sell without you actually being the person to deliver. Now, the business that I started when I was 16 years old, you know, a lot of you guys probably already know my story and, and the business that I've been running for five and a half years now, the business that I started actually was a tick for both of those. It was something where I was paid very, very well. You know, when I started my business, which is an online boutique marketing agency, at first, it was actually a creative agency the first you know, year and a half. And I was paid good retainers by clients 
in order to shoot content for them and then actually distribute and grow their social platforms. And that was great. But really after the first nine months of doing it, I was kind of capped out at around 10 to $15,000 a month. So that's when I started to use leverage. I started to hire contractors and I actually repositioned my offer to run ads for online businesses. And that was really when I started hitting the $100,000 a month plus in my business. And ladies and gentlemen, since then, I've started three other businesses in very different industries. So I understand what choosing the right vehicle is and how to actually properly assess these different vehicles. Now, I've said it in many, many podcasts that I've even been uh, you know, a guest on. I am not the hardest worker. Right. There are people and undoubtedly I had to work extremely, extremely, extremely hard to build up my business and then get it to the point where I made my first million by the age of 18. Of course, undoubtedly. But since that point, you know, making well over 15 million dollars more, I didn't do that by being necessarily the hardest worker. I did it by choosing the right vehicles. Now, if you want to choose the right vehicle and the right model for you, I actually made this really cool chart where I assessed all the different business models, the pros, the cons, and I put it in a table all visually. Now, now if you want access to that, it's entirely free. It's just a separate YouTube video I made. It's not going to take you to any weird page or anything like that. Click the link right below this video in order to access that chart entirely for free. That video where I really try to dive deep and find what the best business model is in 2022, that video has gotten hundreds of thousands of views. People went crazy for it. So you can definitely check that out if you want to just start to get an idea of the right business model to use in 2022. But anyways, that kind of ties in and summarizes that point, which is it's not necessarily about how hard you work. It's about how hard you work. Plus, what vehicle are you in? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to go ahead and drop a like on this video if you're going to be a future millionaire. And in the comments, also leave which habit out of the three do you think is the most important to making your first million? For anyone in the comments, I'm going to be giving away a pair of blue light blockers from my e-commerce brand Gadgie, and you'll find the winner to that in the next video. Now, the last habit that made me a millionaire by the age of 18 was journaling. Now, I really hope that you didn't roll your eyes at that, but hear me out for a second. When you are first getting started with entrepreneurship or self-help or, you know, really trying to further your career, a lot of times you have a lot of self-doubts and a lot of times you aren't very self-aware. You don't understand yourself. You don't understand why are you feeling these emotions? You know, why are you perceiving something a certain way? Uh, you don't understand when you're, uh, for example, projecting your own insecurities, your own doubts on a situation. So what journaling is, is journaling is a way to really hold a mirror at yourself. Now, on the list of attributes that makes a highly successful person, for me, self-awareness is somewhere near the top. Now, journaling every day really, really hones in your self-awareness. And as I said, this is by far one of the most powerful tools when you are trying to get to your first million in life. Because along the journey, you will have doubts, you will have you know thoughts that creep in. And if you don't have self-awareness, then those thoughts and those doubts might cripple you. But if you do things like journaling or, for example, meditating, then you start to understand yourself and you start to understand that sometimes these thoughts aren't necessarily you. So from the ages of 14 to 19, I basically religiously journaled every morning and every evening. And as I said, that really, really helped me build up my level of self-awareness and understand the mental chains that I was placing on myself and how to break free of those. Now, these days, sometimes I'll go months without journaling and then I'll go for you know a month uh, and I'll journal every single day. It's really when I feel as though I need it. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a muscle that you train self-awareness. So once you get to the point where you're just a very sort of self-aware person in general, then things get a little easier and you don't actually have to journal every single day. So really just to round out this video, I want to say that if you are the type of person who is consuming this sort of content on YouTube, this tells me that very, very likely you're on your path or maybe you've already accomplished hitting seven figures in life. Another thing that I want to say is when you reach a million, you'll actually realize that, you know, it's just a number. You know, it's just a number. It's just one milestone. And, and you realize really the true beauty in life. You know, the, the reward to playing the game and winning is that you get to keep playing. And that's the really cool thing. You know, it's like you hit these milestones and you think that, you know, once you hit these milestones, you're like, oh, I did it. And no, not really. You just kind of sit back at your desk the next day and you're like, all right, let's keep climbing. And I think for me, that is really just the beauty of all this stuff. So on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead, like, leave that comment and let me know which habit. And I'll catch you all in the next one.